And welcome back to another episode of The Huge Boob Corner, a show that is a breast of fresh air. And today my guest is su such a beautiful woman, and ver I'm very, very excited that she's here, and I'm very happy that she decided to do my show because I want I, I wanted to have her on the show for, for probably since I started doing the show. So she and she's amazingly busty. So I would love you to to welcome Miss Marilyn Mason. Thank you. That thank was a you, good intro. Is thank this, you very is this much. My camera. Yes, that is your camera. Hello. <laughs> so um, so yeah. So I just I, again I I want to say thank you again. I'm I'm glad I'm I'm happy that my show stood out to you to to want to do. Yeah, it looks so, like fun. It's very pretty. I love pink. So, yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, have you had other people ask you to do their shows? Yes. Okay, and you just and I'm I'm also nervous. Like, really, a okay. little bit. So I was like, ah, uh, huh. but like I love watching podcasts. It's like one of the number one things I do. So I'm like. No, it's not that big a deal. Let's just do it. It's fun. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, nice. It's gonna so, be a fun time. Yeah. So anyway, so our, uh, uh, awesome. So, uh, so you're you're actually you uh, you're new to Vegas still. Do you consider pretty yourself new. pretty new? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I've okay. been here about a year and a half. Okay, and you moved here from Oklahoma. Okay, so how uh, how 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 was that to adjust to? Very drastically different and the best way possible. Like, I grew up in Oklahoma. It's home to me. So a lot of times I say Oklahoma and people are like, oh, I bet you're so happy to be done. I'm like, hey, 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 <laughs> calm down. Don't diss my home state. But at the same time, yeah. yes, <laughs> yeah, <there's, laughs> it's totally different. Yeah. Do you still do you still go back? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I, like, that's my friends and family. Like, okay. I'm always going to be an Oklahoma. -y, yeah. You know, like, that's just how it goes. But ever since I moved here, I mean, I love the weather. Mm -hmm. It's so much better for my career. There's just so much more going on. Yeah. Before, like, trying to set up collabs and you have to travel for work. That's it. There's yeah. no, I mean, solos, but there's no one to work with there. So it's very... Uh, you know, and then you travel for a week, you shoot every single day, and that's still only six freaking shoots, you yeah. know? And you're like, oh, this is getting old. So yeah. I was like, okay, let's let's look at the porn capitals of the world. We got Miami, kind of New York, maybe a little bit of Seattle, LA, Vegas. So I was like, I really think Vegas is like affordable. Mm -hmm. Traffic is not bad. No. It's not bad. And it's just like, it's like this little city. It's like a big city in a little town, and I like that. Well, you know what's what's interesting is because we're very isolated here. Because mm -hmm. once once you leave the valley, there's nothing in right. any direction. So we don't have like you go to L.A. It never ends. You leave L.A. You're driving through Pasadena. You're driving through San Bernardino, Riverside. Whereas here, it, we almost we feel you know we it, yeah it is kind of like it's big and it's small in 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 mm -hmm. ways. So little, little town and surrounded by the mountains too. I love that there's so much city and as you're driving, it's just like beautiful mountains. Just it's the perfect mix of both. Yeah. So how big was the town that you grew up in? Um, I grew up in Edmond, Oklahoma. It's like right next to Oklahoma city. Okay. So it's like, I don't know. I mean, we had like 3000 people in our high school, so it was big, okay, you know, okay. yeah. but we had like three high schools. I don't know. I would say it's. It's not like an itty bitty town, but mm. yeah. So would you say then that as you, when you moved here, that just your career prospects and everything just really kind of opened up and just, there was so much more uh, at your, at, you know, at your fingertips to be able to do. Yeah. Cause like I mostly do a lot of my own independent work. Mm -hmm. So it's like up to me to shoot and collab and there's just so many people. Everybody comes through Vegas. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Even if can, they don't live here. Right. Like you, for instance. I was yeah. like, wait, where are you at? You said Vegas. I'm like, I love living here. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's so no, nice. It's, it's great. And that's, the, yeah, because LA is just way too expensive. Mm. It's way too big. I can't crowded. handle the traffic. I like, I'm, you know, I also lived in Houston for six years. So I'm not like a bitch. I know how to drive. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but I get slapped around like a hockey puck when I'm in LA and I'm like, I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> this it's, is it's, overwhelming. It's, it's too <laughs> like, nerve wracking. Yes. And just to be stuck to get, you go 10 miles can take like two hours mm -hmm. and it's just the, the amount of time that you waste yeah. sitting in traffic is, is ridiculous. Whereas here there is a little bit, most of it is I think from construction projects mm -hmm. as you've seen, like the on Tropicana and driving me nuts. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And then they just like throw those cones up and expect you to figure it out. I can't tell you how many people are like, what are we, what yeah, are we what doing? Are you, yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't know either, honestly, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. It's just like, three to five hours yeah, to anything much. you need to do in California. So it's like, or yeah. LA-ish. Yeah. So it's like, 
why even live there? And the vibe here you're, you're, you're cool with. Cause I know some people come here and like, they, you know, like anything, you come from a place where I don't know if people are nicer where you're, you know, where you're, where you're originally from. And I don't know if people here are you know, not as nice or if they're just as nice, like how, how, how what have you noticed about that? No, I love people here. I, okay. It's been really easy to make friends. Okay. And I mean, people in the Midwest are definitely certainly friendly in the sense that like, if you're a stranger at a store, they're going to speak to you but there's also it's also the bible belt there's yeah, also a lot yeah, of yeah. judgment i was always kind of a big fish in a small pond so like i was not um a busty fish i was not as beloved there yes exactly like <laughs> this pissed fish people in, off yeah, you know crazy to think. it's like i'm not even i did do this today because i was like let's yeah yeah let's sit pretty yeah but like in general even if i had half this much cleavage people were mm -hmm. like kind of shitty to me yeah well, not that, always but just like why are you doing too much you know the big boob just, prejudice not even just that but just like i like to be eccentric and dress like mm -hmm. wild you know la would love me for that yeah, yeah they yeah. would totally embrace me but oklahoma is kind of like yeah you're doing too much A like, little, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> Well, and again, but at least you're, you, it's not so bad that you can't go back. Like you can go mm -hmm. back, you can see your friends, you can see your family. It's not going to be too uncomfortable, no. but, but this is a bet, you know, probably a better fit. In terms I love of, it. I, yeah. I almost, I'm like, oh shit, because my favorite place I've ever lived is Seattle. Mm -hmm. And I always plan to like eventually settle down there, but I'm like, I don't know, man. I really like the desert and the weather here. Mm -hmm. I I'll just be real with you. I, I, I think, and I'm diagnosing myself. I think I have hyperhidrosis. Like okay. I am a sweater. You're, oh yeah. Okay. I told you I run hot. Before yeah, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, like the dry heat is excellent for that. Yeah. Cause like, I know not suffer sweat. with that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's like, and I lived in Houston before. Oh, so can you imagine? Terrible. Yeah. I've been there. Every time I go there, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> I'm a wet blanket. <laughs> yeah. Or like going to Miami for stuff when, when you've had to shoot for, for different companies, mm -hmm. which, which actually I wanted to, so I just wanted to get a quick rundown of your, you know, your adult industry, you know, history, your career, you know, when you started all that stuff. Totally. Yeah. Shooting in Miami this time of year is very, and they do make you turn like the AC off and I'm like, oh, oh Lord, oh, this no. is hot, you know, but um, <laughs> no, I started um, doing cam in like 2010. Okay. I did that pretty heavy for the first, excuse me, two years. <laughs> and um, then I was getting kind of like, this was in Houston, Oklahoma. I was bouncing around from both. So my normie friends and my family were kind of like, not necessarily judging me, but like, how long can this really last? You yeah. might want to do something solid, you know? And I'm like, well, every time I need to get hired somewhere, I always go back to Claire's because <laughs> I've worked there a bunch of times yeah. and they'll hire me. So I'm like, eh. So... Did the two years camming, went back to Claire's just because I thought I needed to, you mm -hmm. know, um, then was just doing camming, like kind of on the side and score recruited me in the messages. Okay. I got a message from Elliot James, love him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is this legit? I'm not sure, you know? Yeah. Um, so they kind of launched my career and I appreciate it so much, yeah. but I kind of thought it would be like a one and done. Um, at the time, like on cam, I was Marilyn Milkshake. Mm -hmm. So they were like, hey, can you change your last name? And I'm like, why? And they're like, because we see longevity with you, but your milk's not going to last forever. And I was like, <laughs> well, you know what? Thank you, first of all. But nice. like, okay, fine. But even like today, like I'm always going to bring it back to the milk. My website's MarilynMilkMe.com. Oh, you know, nice. like, right, I love right. the milk. Yeah. But yeah, I just looked up, you know, different M names and Mason just sounded right, you know? Yeah. Everybody yeah, yeah. thinks it's like a tribute to Marilyn Manson. I'm like, no, it's just like it works, you know, because I am mm -hmm. alternative and yeah, whatever, you know? I love uh, all my uh, Instagram handles and Twitter and everything are all like Titney Spears and like Dolly Porn Tits and like, uh, I'm trying to think, I have so many Conway Titty and Breast Midler and, you know what I mean? I could just, I mean, you love this, right? The yeah, titty yeah. part. Yeah, yeah, so I'm yeah, like, so, yeah, wait, it, I got it, more. Um, it, what else do I have? Oh, right now I have Nips of an Angel. There you go. Love that one. Nice. Also kill them with fineness. Like anyway, so yeah, just, mm -hmm. I love a good pun. So yeah, it sounds like it. I was like, yeah, that'll work for me. Um, and then, so Score basically wanted me exclusive, although they didn't have me sign a contract or give me any money for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All they yeah. said was, listen, there's this other company, this competing company, Blomber Pass. And <laughs> <laughs> they're like, this guy's going to hit you up, but 
we don't want you to shoot with him. And basically, we'll call you back more if you don't shoot with him. And so at first, I was kind of like, then he hit me up. And I was like, uh-uh, I heard about you. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I kind of had, but whatever, we're cool now. And since then, I've definitely worked with Plumper Pass a lot of times. I like both of them. I love shooting with both of them. Mm-hmm. It's been a while because like when I started shooting for SCORE, they had such a large uh, studio. Mm-hmm. It was like a super Walmart. Really? Or bigger, okay. um, honestly. Because I only was on the first floor, but there was a whole second floor. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was a ton of people, cubicles. This is a big, you know, building with lots of jobs and things. And since then, the last time I shot for them was probably, what, 2018 maybe? Mm-hmm. It was just me, the camera guy. I had to do my own hair and makeup, and we had an Airbnb. Really? And they had they don't have the studio anymore. So it's like, oh, that's damn, I really miss shooting for them. But like... Yeah, it's not it's not the same, but I do love that they launched me because they were very good at giving you the princess treatment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I love that. Like someday, hopefully not too far off, I'd love to have my own production company mm-hmm. and I would love to take the elements of score that I loved so much mm-hmm. and bring that back, you know, cuz it was so nice just having like a robe for yourself and yeah, like Yeah, yeah. A shuttle, like people like pick you up, they get you lunch, like, you know what I mean? There's just like this mm-hmm. beautiful wardrobe. They treat you like a queen. They call you the talent. Like, yeah. not that big a deal, but like, it's yeah, just no, no, no. It, it was, the little things. Yeah. It's just weird that they've had to contract so much. I mean, I'm wondering, cause I mean, I know that for instance, their print uh, issues have gone down in the last few years. They used to do monthly, but now I think they just do quarterly. Mm. So for their for their main issue score, and then their other ones, Voluptuous and BB XL or XL Girls, stuff like that. Those were always kind of. So it's just it's yeah it sucks that that they've had to scale back since then. I wonder why. I wonder if maybe that. Well, I have some theories. Okay. Um, I definitely think that um they've made some bonehead moves, right? Mm-hmm. So I was told back in the day that like. The overall audience is requesting me quite often, but, and this is just word of mouth, but the owner of SCORE doesn't like tattoos. He likes, that's why they always like kind of um, vanilla me up. They Mm -hmm. like, they kind of, sometimes they go a little, they can, their makeup artists can make girls look older Mm -hmm. and more humdrum. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And They also were just too specific with their body type for XL girls. They missed out on so many big booties. They missed out on so many girls. Like, I can't tell you how many of my friends I pitched them. Well, like I had a Sarah Starr on Mm -hmm. the show. I don't know if you've seen her. but Yeah, I've worked with Sarah. Yeah, yeah. she's got lots of tattoos too. And Mm -hmm. she said that she was passed over because she had too many tattoos uh, for them. And it was... And her hair color too. They made me dye my hair. Whenever I first was with them, I had half my head shaved mm-hmm. and they were like, can you grow that out? And then they, they made me wait long enough to where they could put extensions in. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If, I don't know how big of a uh, um, admirer you are of mine or if you know my first work, but I oh, had I, these I, silly, like, I just looked so, I almost looked older then than I am now. And I was 22 and now I'm 34. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's interesting how they, how they do. Well, yeah. Cause the, the way that they want that certain aesthetic, and so, so, th- so there's that. So they had a very, those they had very strict image mm. requirements that you. But think, it's like not. That's not what sells. You know what I mean? Well, it's like in my opinion. Well, it's like they started in the early '90s, and mm-hmm. there was a certain thing that they that was attractive in the early '90s, and and so uh, and the original owner, I think, I don't know if he still owns it. His name was John Fox. I don't. I know didn't if, even know that. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> he was the guy who started it. He came from another magazine, started Score in the early '90s. I don't know who owns it now, um, but. But yeah, and but it's like, you know, you keep going, and the and the magazine's over thirty years old now, and it's like tastes change. They yeah, different types, which they kind of saw like because for instance, in the nineties, it was all about super fake, super slim, be shine, when, yeah, stuff like that. Or you know, there were a lot of models from that time that that's that was what they did, and then towards the late nineties, early two thousands, they started getting more natural, you know, models in there with natural boobs and stuff like that. So. Uh, so yeah, so I don't know. It's, yeah, I guess they, because of their, their, the rigidity that they have might've hurt them. And then was there any, any other theories that you had or? Well, I just, you know, they, of course they are the big boob company, but they have a lot of niches. They had tiny Mm -hmm. teens. They had over sixties, over fifties, over Mm sixties. I just didn't understand why they couldn't just have a BBW site. Mm -hmm. You guys 
clearly are competing with Plum for Pass. You told me that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's over here kind of running the monopoly, and I don't know why you're like leaving money on the table, not shooting mm-hmm. a bunch of big names that just slightly don't fit your body standard. Like yeah. there was a friend that I had submitted her to, and I thought, yeah, they're totally going to pick her. And they told her, your boob to belly ratio is never going to be what we want it to be. I know. Listen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that lady, that specific lady. Am I allowed to name names? Cause, I mean, I would. No, okay, I, I won't. Uh, it's, All yeah, right, I, fine. I, I, but that lady, <laughs> let's just say I probably will never shoot with them again because I, I had words with her because she's not. Yeah. She's the problem. If you want to ask why I think score is going down, it's her. It's her. There might, because I've had other guests talk about that and they've brought up another person, a woman who works for their company who I, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember because they didn't name her either. Yeah. Because so I just, I just wonder I'm if that's the same person. Well, no, I'm just saying it's, <laughs> it's just uh, like, it's just interesting because, um, you know, you'd think that, yeah, that, that, uh, you know, you wouldn't want to hurt your brand. And yeah. for some reason, you know, making certain decisions, if that is the outcome. But then again, now, but the thing now, though, is, is, uh, you know, with, with your own independent content creation, it's almost yeah. like studios in general have kind of suffered of course. as a result, because now you can just do whatever you want. You know, you can shoot what you want. Cause, and we were going to, you know, going to talk about that, about, uh, you know, independent content and how you've been getting into that. Yeah. No, I definitely prefer that for sure. It's just sometimes it's nice to have a day on set. Like, yeah. a, you know what I mean? Like a whole like, like a professionals, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But no, I definitely love shooting for myself more. I love having creative control over what talent I work with and hair and makeup and premise, you know? Mm-hmm. And if, you know, I, I do a lot of cuts. I don't go straight through. They yeah. always wanted to just... You know, no yeah. stopping. And I'm like, why not? It's fine. <laughs> you know, and I'm going to have the AC on. You yeah, know what I yeah, mean? Right, like, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. But I mean, I'm just having so much fun directing. Mm. And this is like what I like to do. This is how I it's express myself creatively is like through my work. I love it so much. Mm. Like it's so much more than a job to me. It's like really my creative outlet. Okay. So then when did you start to kind of segue? Because do you do mainly mainly your own stuff now? And, you know. Mostly. Okay. So at what point did that, did you start to do that? Is it when OnlyFans and those stuff started to get more popular? Or Um, Yeah, because I had a website before, MarilynIsMagic.com, but it kind of fell off. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And then mostly it was like, so we went from cam to shooting companies, companies and cam kind of like that for Mm -hmm. a while. Then uh, Model Central came around. I started my little website. It never did numbers like OnlyFans, you know? Um, Then there was the Snapchat craze, and Mm -hmm. that became my bread and butter. I was doing a lot. I mean, I guess I was creating, but it was very on the fly. Yeah. Um, Very amateur. It was fun. We had a good time, honestly. Like, I put on a show, and my my (laughs) people were very... They were having fun okay. with me. <laughs> yeah. But then that went under and it was like, okay, now what? I was kind of like not, I was one of the last people I feel like of my, um, you know, the people within my level. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> the no, people sorry. have been around as long as me that yeah. jump on opportunity. You know what yeah. I mean? My people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I was one of the last people of that to join OnlyFans. And I was just like, oh, no, no. but then like, you mm-hmm. know, that I probably joined two months or a month before the pandemic. And thank goodness, you yeah. know, because yeah, that made a huge difference. So back before, you know, I had all these ideas for what I wanted to shoot. The goal was to make films, Mm -hmm. but I didn't have the money for it, you know? So my favorite thing about OnlyFans popping off the way that it did is it gave me the money to make the content I wanted to make. And I was like, great, awesome. Because I remember back in the day, I wanted to do like a Kickstarter because I was just like, guys, I have really cool ideas. GoFundMe? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If if, I don't know if you could get away with a GoFundMe, they might not. I just say it's film, you know, it's art films. Exactly. Yeah. Erotic art films. Um, you did features with score though, right? Like there, mm-hmm. you, you did a couple titles with them that were like, cause they sh- one thing I liked about them is they actually made like full movies mm. that had a story to them and, and characters as opposed to just mm. scenes. 
I wouldn't go that far because okay. like when I think of features, I think of like Angela White, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like yeah, we yeah. never had anything that was I still think the scenes were more so your typical porn scenes. They were great mm. and they were long and they were fun and they were they had awesome sets. The the one of the cool things about their studio is they had so many different sets and they were all I mean, whoever de decorated for them was really good at their job, yeah. you know? So that kind of stuff was really cool. But no, I would really love to make actual movies because unfortunately, BBWs are not being casted in some of the coolest roles. You know, I go to <laughs> AVN every year and I see these things that these other girls are in and I'm like, I want to do that so bad. Like, yeah, yeah. I love acting. So I'm like, okay, fine. Listen, mm. I'm going to. Yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause there's, and there's a lot of interesting content that, and, and movies that people have been making in regards to just actual, like with, with, you know, strong artistic choices with cinematography and camera and yeah. stuff like that. So, um, so I'm curious then are, are, do you have any specific ideas that come to mind that you really want to do? So many cosplays, so many parodies. Um, I have a couple original characters too. I have my cousin Tundra. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. But she's my cousin. It's not me. Okay. Obviously. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I have my other cousin, Water Melanie. And these two are always fucking my boyfriends. It's treacherous. Like every time they house it for me, it's just like, mm -hmm. it always happens. Okay. You know? um, but then other than that, gosh, I have so many cosplays in the works. I have like a closet full of half thought out cosplays that I'm just like, I'm being a bit of a perfectionist on mm -hmm. um, my assistant and me are literally making a schedule this week to be like, listen, we are going to finish this rockadoodle. Yeah. Fucking, do, you know, <laughs> do you remember rockadoodle? Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah. Oh my God. I love that movie. So I've got all the stuff for him. Most of the stuff for her. We just need to, you know, finish off a couple others. Mm -hmm. um, there's one that I want to do for Joyce from Edward Scissorhands. Oh, okay. Was that Winona Ryder's character? No. Or was she one of the um, neighbors? She's the one who says, I brought the ambrosia. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was the neighbor who was yeah. who was enamored with with uh, Edward. So I really, I like, there are a couple scenes that didn't quite go far enough for me. And that scene where she's, you know, straddling him in the, mm -hmm. in the chair, I'm like, that that needs to go further. So that's the idea for that one, okay. you know? But um, yeah, there's just, I would love to do more like a feature, like a movie, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. something that's just, it doesn't just start middle ends with a cum shot. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That would be really cool. So no, it is, there's a story. I also um, worked on a B horror film back in 2014. It's called Evil Night and mm -hmm. it was directed by Chris Seaver and me and him have kind of been in the works with that because I could do this, but like it would be so cool to have him do it with me because he knows what he's doing. He's filmed yeah. a lot of movies and he's got some really good ideas. I will not give out his his ideas. Sure, sure. But <laughs> yeah, we definitely want to come together and Maybe that one we might actually have to do some kind of Kickstarter for because it's mm -hmm. it's really elaborate and it would be a movie. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, and yeah, it seems like there's just again, there's there's such a void of that kind of content right mm -hmm. now because again, it's with the rise of like reality porn and gonzo porn and stuff, you know, it almost seems like high quality features just kind of went by the wayside. Yeah. And and we don't get a lot of that. Or may or maybe we do I I just don't know about it, but it just seems like uh, it's not it's not as prevalent as it used to be. Like when, because you said that you saw Christie's episode or some of it, and it's just like you know when Christie started, that's all they did because it was all movies right. in the eighties. They didn't have you didn't just do scenes because you had to release it on video or yeah. She earned her royalties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but and but that's the thing now. And that and speaking of royalties, it's like that's one of the that's one been I think one of the big things that the porn industry you know because. Performers don't get residuals. You don't get royalties from stuff you do, from scenes you make. And that's what's good about indie porn is exactly. that's, that makes up the difference because there's our royalties. Yeah, exactly. So any every sale you make on you know on a on a site or on OnlyFans goes, you know, to you. You don't and have, you film one video and it's gonna make you money for years to come. Exactly. So. They you know, I'm sure you have stuff on that you filmed years ago that people are still buying. Absolutely. So, you know, and um, so you've got Edward Scissorhands as, or that character from Edward Scissorhands. Um, and you talked about parodies, like 
what like what kind of parody would you besides like Rock a Doodle and and Entrances? So I, I I had done um, a Rock of Love parody, Brett oh, Michaels yeah, yeah, yeah. dating yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. Um, that we did one episode. Since then, my cousin Tundra tried out for season four. Okay, there's no season four. Yeah, but yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, don't yeah, tell yeah, her yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd love to do more. Because I just love that show so much that yeah, I, that I would love show. to do more episodes of that show. And mm-hmm. then um, I'd love to do a lot our of great own. boobs on that show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. So. Um, so, yeah, I just love that cast of characters. I wish I wish they all come back together for something else. So if mm-hmm. I can parody them, it's almost like, you know, giving new episodes that would never exist otherwise. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, I'd love to do like my own original reality show too. I think that would be cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, you know, do you have an, so what would the concept for that be? Um, I'm actually not sure yet because I, it, I've, it's gone different ways. I'm like, oh, we could do like this or that, but I don't want to do like a big brother thing. You know, I don't want to do like a mm-hmm. cameras on you at all times. I love Jersey Shore. So yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd rather it be more like that. Not that the cameras weren't on them all the time, but mm-hmm. I'm just saying a good cast of characters where the vibe is very like they're a unit, they're family oriented, not pit against each other, mm-hmm. you know, no competitiveness. Yeah. Unless yeah. we're doing rock of love. Yeah. And we're mud well, wrestling. Well, I was going to say, did you see, there was one, there was a show that came out. I think it was a year or two ago. It was called milf manor. Oh yeah. You saw that. Okay. I did a parody of that. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. It was, um, it was a custom for somebody. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that was something that you felt like could have actually been like an adult production, but no, it was on. They went a little far with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, man, there's some interesting stuff out there, but yeah, no, the reality stuff like, you know, you, so you'd have like the interviews and the different people. Yeah. I love, I love the confessionals. Yeah. That's like one stuff. of my favorite parts. Yeah. It sucks that they kind of got, cause they, they, they kind of ran its course. I think the last one they did was like Megan wants a millionaire. No. And that was the, that was the, yeah, I think, well, when they found out something about one of the contestants, right. that was that, that kind of ended that. Right. But um, and wasn't wait something? No, sorry, I was thinking of Joe Millionaire, and that was the guy who didn't know that he was. That was the Joe Schmo show. Oh, you're right. That was the one he didn't know he was on a show. Joe Millionaire was the one. All the the women thought he was a millionaire, and right. he wasn't. And he yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, and all those you're shows. Totally went- right. <laughs> wasn't there another one where they ha- they couldn't air it because something else tragic happened other than Megan? Yeah, I don't know Poor if another- Megan, she deserves another like showcase. Well, that was, and I mean, that was, that was, I think that was, yeah, that was a while ago now. So I don't know. Yeah. I guess, I guess because of the, I imagine because I'm sure there was a massive, uh, you know, scandal within that, within VH1, the fact that they didn't vet that guy properly yeah. probably led to, I don't know if there were lawsuits or other th- stuff because they gave that guy a platform essentially. Mm-hmm. So, um, cause yeah, after that, all of that stuff left. Except, I mean, maybe, I, I don't know if the New York shows kept going. Do mm. so you remember New York from oh, absolutely. Flavor Love? Yeah. Mm. So I love New York. Yeah, exactly. I love New York. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but then after that, yeah, VH, it seems like they, they just stopped doing all that stuff. So, because I'm sure they could have found other people. Right. Like other rock stars, other, you know, people that to, to be on, on that stuff. But I, I don't think I'm able to give away any details or anything, but I did just do a mainstream I won't say okay. something. Something. And okay. we did have to do a very thorough criminal background check and a psych evaluation. Oh, interesting. So what was that like? Um, it was just like a couple I was like literally six hundred questions. <laughs> uh-huh. And it was like that took I think two hours. And then after that you meet with the psychiatrist and I think that was another hour. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Okay. It well, wasn't bad. But. Well, I was going to say, because that actually can segue, because you said you wanted to, you know, one of the things you wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, your mental health. Okay. And but one more thing. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. No. Of course. <laughs> I love the segue. That's totally fine. But I was just going to say that the two favorites of um, of mine on Rock of Love were season three, Ashley and Farah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. who we did. And um they loved it. They reposted it. Really? That's all I was oh, going nice, I was nice. so excited. I'm like, we won. That's all I cared about. Because yep. honestly, it's crazy because like with every time I posted it, it kind of flopped. And I'm like, huh? I'm like, dude, every time I show it to someone individually, like my mother, you know, mm-hmm. my friends are like, this is so cool. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, guess what? It's 
it's free on Pornhub right now. You can watch it on my Pornhub <laughs> because I was just like, I want more eyes on it, you yeah, know? Yeah. So, well, that's cool though, that you were able to do it and then they were able to see it and they liked it and they did. They every, loved every, it. They thought it was really it. funny. Nice. Nice. So, um, back to mental health. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you were telling me though that that uh, I think when you messaged me about it that now you've been because you got correctly diagnosed mm-hmm. it was a, it was a big thing for you. So what uh so you know you want to get into just Totally. Kind of, all right. Um night and day. I would say I think it was 2021. Um I was okay, so I've struggled for a really long time just kind of being out of control um just really not in control of my emotions and just blurting out everything. Mm. No, there's no thought process in between. Yeah. And just thinking on feelings, saying exactly how it is worse than blunt, you know, yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? So it was a moment like that with this guy. I don't even think we were really dating, but this guy, mm-hmm. and he was just like, have you ever, have you ever been um, diagnosed or, uh, have you ever been tested for borderline personality disorder? And at first I was offended. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? You know, which mm-hmm. is kind of telling like a sign of borderline. <laughs> and he was, I said, why? Why do you think that? And he said, because I dated a girl with borderline personality and you're like, you're uh, exhibiting like a lot of the same similarities. Mm-hmm. And he goes, let me send you a book. It was called, um, I Hate You Don't Leave Me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. since then, I'm like, dang, because like I have kind of been my worst enemy for mm-hmm. the longest time. Like, and I don't want to be, you no, know? No, no, like, no. it's crazy because I'm like, I see why people might have a problem with me, but I'm like, it's like for the longest time, it felt like I can't fix it and I don't know why, yeah. you know? Um, but I didn't even know that borderline personality disorder was a thing. Mm-hmm. Then I really start looking into it and I listen to other people's stories and they've done the exact dumb embarrassing moves that I've done and I'm like they don't even know me you know we just have the same we're under the same umbrella Mm -hmm. and that and there's like a you do your dumb little outburst that whatever Mm -hmm. and it's followed by a guilt like pure guilt and it's like this and this and this and this like the whole time yeah so anyways um, since then I've been like, oh, cause even the guilt makes sense to me now. Mm-hmm. That's part of it, you know? Yeah. Um, since then I found a really good therapist. He's awesome. Mm-hmm. I've been on, uh, mood stabilizers for two years now. Okay. And for, you know, even before that, when I was undiagnosed, we were trying different cocktails of things and that's scary. Yeah. That, can, yeah. that does that can do the opposite of helping sometimes. So, yeah. Finally, you know, and I feel like you you don't know how your body's going to react to certain medications, and mm-hmm. then other certain medications mixing with other medications mm-hmm. in your body. Yeah, and like before, people would put me on like three at a time. The wow. psychiatrist I have now is like, we're going to start with one, so you can see if you have a bad side effect from the one, then we'll build on that. You mm-hmm. know, so he works really well in tandem with my therapist, and my therapist is just—I mean, coping skills are a real thing. You yeah. know, like ever since I've learned. Just learning that this is the diagnosis I have and this is what people do with that diagnosis, that already was like, oh. So then when I have maybe a not so great feeling, Mm -hmm. it's easier to be like, oh, this is one of those little moments and I don't need to act on it. Like, you know, something triggered me, something upset me. I don't need to text that person right now. I'm going to sit. Mm-hmm. And wait a while. And then if I still feel that way in two hours, then, you know, I love my journal, you yeah, know, yeah. I love to hash it out there. So journaling's great. Um, breathing exercises are very great, you mm-hmm. know, and just having like a weekly check in with somebody is a good way to hold yourself accountable. So yeah. I think this year, too, has just been like the biggest growth for me. So well, that's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, do you think that the, just the mental health industry has, you know, gotten better? I think, I don't know, in the last uh, maybe couple decades where a lot of, maybe a lot of, uh, people had stuff that, they, that didn't go diagnosed and mm. they, they just, again, they were kind of in the dark having to try to figure out stuff. And now I don't know if people are more 
if there are do- more doctors and people, therapists out there that have more information that are more, that can actually, you know, because again, you, you, I mean, how long did you feel this way before you got diagnosed? Since I was like 15. Yeah. And so, and I mean, you think that if you had gotten diagnosed back like in high school, it would have been. Oh my God. I think that all the time when I talk to people, I have a friend who's in her early twenties and she's been diagnosed for years. My, my assistant has been diagnosed for years and I'm like, dude, that would have been fantastic, you know? Mm -hmm. But I will say I, yes and no. Like, I think that it's become more destigmatized, but there is a definite, um, lack of mental health professionals. They're really hard to find. Mm. Um, and I, definitely appreciate my fans because one of the hardest things was staying on health insurance. Like when you're paycheck to paycheck, it's hard to keep your health insurance, you know? So now that I can afford that, like that's a huge help. Yeah. Um, and then just to help anyone who might be struggling finding a therapist, I found mine through psychology.com and you're Mm -hmm. able to like really narrow down. I want this. I don't want this. And I found one after mm-hmm. I clicked all my boxes, there was one. Yeah. And I knew, you know, and I even like, so yeah, people with borderline personality disorder, they will do like a push and pull, you mm-hmm. know, it's like a roller coaster of like, uh, uh, uh. so I dumped him at one point. Okay. And this is how good he is that he was like, he gave me like two weeks to think about it. And then he just came back, not no emotions, just said, Hey, you know, we were really making progress. If you don't want to work with me, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But we have other therapists here in the office. And I immediately, like probably 20 minutes after I broke up with him, I was like, shit, I'm probably (laughs) doing that thing again. I was like, oh, I was doing good. And now I'm, I'm like going to lose that progress. So I was like, Mm -hmm. but I was still kind of like, I'm upset. So I don't want to reach out to him, you know? (laughs) So for him to be like, the bigger person and reach out to me and let me know. Cause that's the other thing too. Like we have, um, anxious attachment disorder and like a fear of rejection. So I have had therapists make me feel like judged and like, I'm gone. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Like I cannot tell you my most inner personal thoughts. If I feel the judgment, like ain't no way, you know? Yeah. So he definitely, it's not even remotely something. It's just, He's very um, fact based. Mm-hmm. You know, we do DBT, which is dialectical behavioral therapy. Mm-hmm. We do EMDR, which is eye movement desensitivity. Wait, <laughs> EMDR, eye movement desensitivity regulation, I believe. Okay. So it's like a eye movement. Yeah. So it's like one specific memory mm-hmm. and you follow the finger mm-hmm. and there's some kind of reprocessing that goes when you are going through the start, middle, and finish with your therapist, with this one specific memory. It's just like, it's crazy. And like, I've done it with two different memories and they used to, like, they're the kind of memories that like, they give you like really bad flashbacks and like, Mm -hmm. oh, and like put you right there. And like, now I'm not doing it here. But if I tell that story, it's not, it's not visceral. It's not like physically you know what I mean? I can just mm-hmm. tell the story. And of yeah. course it's upsetting. It didn't wipe that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it did like change the feelings in your body. Cause you identify those when it happens. Like you go through a little bit and he says, okay, what are you feeling in your body? And you'll be like, oh, I feel like kind of like tension here, mm-hmm. you know? Okay. Let's process that. Da, 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 you know? Okay. It's crazy. But yeah, there's just so many options that I never knew. And if Mm -hmm. I had known years ago, I would have fucking jumped on it, you know? Yeah. So that's why I have added this as a show topic, just because it changed my life so much that I'm like, if anybody is like struggling with that, like, I promise you, I think anybody could benefit from therapy. It's not a shameful thing. Yeah. I wear like a badge of honor. Yeah. Like sometimes I'll be talking to someone and like, I have to go to therapy and they're like, oh, no judgment. That's fine. And I'm like, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> like, No, I'm like really proud of myself on April 5th. It'll be a year. Oh, so. nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, cause it's interesting. Cause I think that it's weird. We're, we're depending on, you know, because social media, I think is, a, it can be a very toxic environment. And it's something where, cause you, you, if you, you know, if you, if you bear your soul on social media, unfortunately you, mm. you you're going to have people that <laughs> are going to be cruel. They're going to be vicious. They're going to say things to, 
to yeah. I mean, you'll have positive comments too. Yeah. But mo- like, I I think a lot of times people will like for every thousand positive comments, you, if you get one negative, you'll remember the one negative one. Mm. And just because it always it stays in, I think it stays in your head. And I think that getting you know getting therapy and stuff like that. There's been this kind of battle between people that think, oh, well, ther- you know, therapy is for people that are weak or th- therapy is mm-hmm. for something that, you know, and it, it's not something that people should, you know, buy into that, you know, it's just, a, it, you have the willpower in yourself to, f- to fix yourself or to, to just feel better. And it's that kind of, you know, mentality where I'm like, you know, not, that might not work for everybody. No. And it sounds like, for instance, what you've been doing has been really helpful. Mm-hmm. And I mean, in conjunction with the other stuff you're doing. Yeah. So, you know, seeing, seeing a therapist, but then having the journal, doing the breathing, doing mm-hmm. other stuff all put together. Just being mindful too. Yeah. Like it's now that I know the cycle, I can identify a lot of the times it's like, okay, so if I'm in the green, I go to the yellow. I can get myself, if I can identify, oh, I'm in the yellow, Mm -hmm. I can get myself back to green instead of going to red. Yeah. In the past, I didn't even know that was a thing. I was just, oh, why is everything so bad? You know, just reacting on pure emotion, Mm -hmm. you know? And I've had, because I I have family members that suffer from depression and they'll, and they've, and they've said that to, for them, it's like being in a, in a black hole. Totally. And they just now, they know they'll come out of it. But they, mm-hmm. but when you're in Maybe it, Maybe not though. Sometimes it is hard to tell. Yeah, I mean, but at least they, 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 they'll when they talk to me about it, they'll say that you know it's it's you know I'm just in that I'm just in my black hole right now, and I'll be better and and yeah. stuff like that. And I, 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 ho- I, you know, I always have that optimism that they will pull out of it. I know there's always a chance that it won't, just mm-hmm. because you know sometimes the the mind can be extremely powerful in that way. Yes. So very much so very true. And it's something where I can imagine it's because it, people act like it's something you're choosing to feel as opposed to it's just happening to you and you're dealing with it. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because there's several people in my family that act that way. So that's another reason why it was so hard for me to get that help I needed. Cause they just kept being like, just stop, just stop acting like this. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not trying to like skirt accountability, but I don't know how to explain to you that like, I can't. Yeah, And then I find out what borderline personality disorder and I realize it's literally one of the hardest mental disorders to deal with because you have heightened emotions. Mm -hmm. So as bad as the depression is, it's worse Yeah, because you're really feeling it, you know, and it's just really insightful to know that while I've been beating myself up for some of the like wrong paths I've taken in life Mm -hmm. that. I kind of have followed the trajectory of my fucking diagnosis to a T to the point where I'm like, I feel like I can forgive myself, you yeah. know, especially yeah. if I'm changing the behaviors and I'm, mm. I'm owning up to it. I feel like I'm on a worldwide apology tour <laughs> <laughs> because I just keep apologizing. I mean it. I keep, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to lie there. I was also not that I've really had much of a drug problem, but there were times that I coped with a little bit of Xanax. Mm. So Xanax mixed with borderline. Oh, uh, not a good thing. Not not a good cocktail. There are people that I've apologized to, and I'm like, I have no idea what I said. I just know it was bad. Oh, I just okay. know it was bad. But yeah. um, yeah, it's just really better to have st- like stable ground. Mm-hmm. You know, you can build upon that. Yes, a foundation. Mm-hmm. You know, once you have a foundation, so it seems you know you you couple. It sounds like you know when you got your mental health in order and then you move here and you actually, yeah. you've got a, 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 a physical here. location yeah. foundation. Now you're like, I can build, you know, I can build my brand a lot better here. Mm-hmm. And so there's maybe a lot more optimism and excitement for the future because you know, you can do that stuff. Yeah. And I think first of all, moving here has definitely been the biggest help, the biggest thing that has helped me find stability Mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure finding a therapist was easier out here because I had a ton of it's not like this is the first time I tried therapy yeah I've had a ridiculous amount of therapists Mm -hmm. and they've all had like you know you'll do four sessions and then you find out they're like a Trump supporter and you're like what the hell (laughs) like oh my god I've been like okay yeah I had one oh my gosh this lady she tried to trade me so she was very after the Trump supporter one, I was mm-hmm. like, let me find someone who is sex positive, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Found this lady. Um, 
And she was a little too sex positive okay. because she started to ask me. She was like, so, you know, I have a lot of clients who have never kissed a woman before and they're in their 40s and 50s. And, you know, I'm not able to legally show them, but I wish I could, you know, and I'm like, OK, where are you going with this? Yeah, and right? she's like, Where's well, this happening? she's like, it's not legal right now, but like maybe in the future, if there was legalities around like surrogacy, would you be interested? And I'm like. That's so fucked up. Like, <laughs> I am your patient. I have my own set of issues. And you're asking me to be a body for these men to practice on? Yeah. that's Isn't that that's, foul? Yeah. That, so then, it, like, when my— And this is a woman doing this. Yes. That's, and then after wild. that, she asked me if I wanted to trade OnlyFans uh, advice because she wanted to start an OnlyFans for, like, sexual education. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? That has got to be a conflict of interest. Yeah. But that was another thing, too. Like, when I had people in my life, they're like, why won't you get help? Why won't you just do this? I'm like, these are the fucking landmines I'm walking yeah, into. Don't yeah. think I'm not trying. I'm trying. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah. These are the people. Yeah. And then this one lady, before that, she just wanted to talk about my cats. Okay. And I'm like, I love my cats. I love my cats. There you go. Yeah. But yeah. rest in peace, Elliot. Mm -hmm. Um. I love my cats, but I'm not going to pay you to talk about them. Yeah. Like, that, I can talk about my cats to anybody. To anybody, yeah. <laughs> and I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but, uh, well, and it, it, it's, yeah, it's, but again, it's great that that all of that stuff came together to to put you in a place where I assume that you're better now than you've probably been in a long time. Ever. Okay. And yeah, and there you go. And that's, Oh, and that, that's another thing, too, about Borderline that I found out is that it starts in your adolescence. It comes to an absolute boiling point in your mid to late 20s. Mm -hmm. And they say, Wikipedia, that it starts to calm down in your 30s. And I'm 34. So I'm like, huh. I wonder. I, it's just all kind of. Yeah. I'm yeah. not sure. Like, I'm sure the therapy is the Helping, number one yeah. reason. Yeah. But I wonder also if it's that too. You it's know? possible. Yeah. If that's if that's one of the things, if that's the trajectory of the mm -hmm. of the condition. You can get to the point, too, that you're able to manage your symptoms that you no longer meet the criteria. So that's the goal. OK. <laughs> that's nice. Um. So, well, I've always found huge boobs to be very good stress relievers. No, totally you know, squishy, yeah. stress balls. I don't know if you can, if you if squeezing your own makes you like makes anxiety go down, or if it has to be somebody else's. I really like what other people do it better, but yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, well, again, so there another another segue into uh, the fact that because you were talking about uh, well, first off, do you do you love having huge boobs? Yes. Okay. Yes. No. It's like a big part of my personality. Okay. <laughs> like it's me. Yeah. You know. And so, and because you know they're natural, did they did they start growing pretty? You know. I, I think I went from a um, A cup to a C cup overnight, and then all of a sudden I just had double Ds out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it wasn't quite cool yet because I had I had them in seventh grade. And I remember someone told me, I was like on the bus. I don't think I was even wearing a bra yet. I was very like, I didn't want to acknowledge how big they were, mm -hmm. you know? Double D is no problem. Yeah, no, and that's know? it's very nerve wracking. I'm sure when you're that when you're that age. Right. I'm sitting in the back of the bus, and this one kid goes, "Um, you need to be careful back here because your your boobs are gonna knock your teeth out." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, he he has a point." You know, because <laughs> like, I was so weird. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've heard of of you know if they're so big that they can give you a black eye, like if you jump or you run. That ass. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. and it just smacks you in the face. Yeah. And, you know, I, I remember a, a friend of mine's mom told me about that, she, that she gave herself two black eyes once at the Damn. same time, which I was like, dang. Wait, what did she do? <laughs> she said she just jumped off something. And then when she landed, they oh, flew okay. up and, and hit her yeah. in the face. Okay, that actually. So, um, poor but, lady. Yeah, I know. I know. So, uh, but, uh, but yeah, but you were talking about that, that you've gone through boob fluctuations. Mm -hmm. So what, like, what do you mean in terms of like, they just, you know, they've grown, they've gotten. I mean, look at them. They're pretty out of control now. They're bigger than ever, I believe. Okay. Um, they've gone from, I would say in the beginning of my career, they were probably just like F cups, mm -hmm. which in score terms is like, mm. yeah. <laughs> it's on you, the smaller you made it. side. You, you yeah, made it. exactly. Just narrowly. Yeah. Um, but now I think I'm a 38 M. Oh, so, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. They're in the middle of the alphabet. M for Maryland. Yes. Right. For both. <laughs> M, M and M. Yeah. Right there. I am an M and M. Thank yep. you for that. Yes. <laughs> Very so. much so. And I love M and M. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So they have definitely been big, been small, back to a little bit smaller, back to bigger. And now they're just like, they're very big and they're yeah. very full. And I'm not going to lie. I could go bigger. <laughs> so, yeah, you were talking. So, you, yeah. so you've thought about going bigger. Not with implants. No, I know, I know the the fat injections, right? Yeah. Um. What's her name? Demora, Demora Avaris. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, after someone because I just thought, damn, that girl is lucky. She's got some great tits, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you. <laughs> on YouTube. Yes, I um, think you're okay. So I was like, and then someone told me, oh, she has fat injections. So I was like, oh, I thought those were real because they don't look like implants, no. you know. And they sent me her like, was it Daily Mail or something article? Yeah. And I was like. Holy shit, that's cool. That is really mm -hmm. cool because yeah, I I don't want to put if I put scars or even a tattoo on my boobs, mm -hmm. that's not cool. My fans would revolt. You yeah, know, they yeah. would be so mad. There would be rioting in the street. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if they just got bigger, yeah, you know, nobody's gonna be mad at that. They're gonna be very excited. Well, and Demora's because they look so natural, and when and because it is it's re fat redistribution right like they, they take it from well i don't know i don't know because i think i need to do more research because there's fat transfer right is that the same i don't think so as fat injections are they not just i don't see, i don't know I, well i don't know if they're taking it from another part of your body and putting it in there oh, or they're of just course. okay that's what i meant so like, either way but i was just wondering like the actual mm -hmm. placing you know it, yeah i don't know and it's I bet, interesting. And I, well, cause I'd love, I mean, I want to, I'd love to have her on the show and, and hopefully I can, uh, you know, have her so I can actually talk to her cause she's the only one. I mean, I know there's other ones that have started doing it, but she Who? seems like, do you know anyone else? Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember a name. I just know that I saw another person talking about getting the same mm -hmm. procedure done as, as Demora did. Uh, but obviously I think she, she's the most well-known person totally. to have that done. And I think she's done it multiple times. So yeah. like, for instance, I wonder what the, what the recovery period is. Cause I know when you get implants, you know, that, that takes weeks or months, you know, because, and there's swelling and there's all this stuff you're bandaged. So, whereas I wonder I if there's not as much, that's what I I'm would saying. have to guess. Cause there's no cutting. No. Yeah. It's not as invasive as, right. as actually putting a foreign object into mm -hmm. your body like that is putting human fat in there, which is. I like implant tits too. I do. Yeah. I'm not at yeah, no, no, all no, no. discriminating. I'm just saying. As for you. For, for being a all natural score girl. Yeah. It's like a, it would be the kiss of death for me, for yeah. my career. If I, if I was to do it. So. Well, and that's the thing is that that's one of the things that I've noticed is that, you know, everybody for, for what kind of, procedures people do or for when in regards to boobs that you know it everybody's got a different way that they want to go about it so yeah. like when i've had people on here that have had expanders you know and, I, and that? that's basically an implant that you put in in your, oh, in your you boob and you can basically inject Dope. more cool. more into it that expands it that's so awesome. but you have you have to obviously do it very incrementally because your skin has to uh, uh, you know ad adapt to the to the greater size um but then again, but then there's some some people that just still have your more traditional implant that is just the the you know the bag or the the implant itself, and then that's it. So, um, but it's just interesting now how there's so many different types of procedures now for breast enlargement than I think there used to be. Okay, but speaking of huge implants, I worked with Claudia Marie recently. Okay. Have you talked to her at all? I, she's I'd here in Vegas. I know, I know, and I, I don't get me wrong. She's she would I love I would really hope to have her on the show. I, mean, I will speak to her. Okay, I appreciate I think, that. I think she would love to do this. She is a hoot. She's oh no, so she, she, funny. Oh yeah, no, her. She's awesome. Yeah, she looks like she would just be an amazing person to talk to. She is. So I would love to have her. So on the show. interesting too. Yeah. So I definitely want to talk because you know she's all about like super the fact that they're mm -hmm. super super saggy. No, which she is loves interesting. it. That's what I'm saying. When I because <laughs> when I worked with her and her husband, they told me like. Listen, we use this kind of verbiage. Is that offensive? I was like, no, I think it's, first of all, thank you. I appreciate you. Asking. You know, telling me, asking me, getting mm. my per consent. But at the same time, like, I don't do a whole lot of that. So I think my, there's going to be people in my audience that are going to be like, that's cool. Like, I like to do different things. I don't care. And I'm also, mm -hmm. you cannot hurt me with the word fat. You cannot, you just, I love my body so yeah. much. Yeah. And I've made so much money off of it that like. A lot of people like it. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just doesn't compute in my mind anymore for people to fat shame me or anything like. Yeah. So, you yeah. know what I mean? And I know how porn goes. Like, this is a very um, primal state that we're in when we're masturbating. So, mm -hmm. like, 
some verbiage like that is like to me not at all offensive. Directed it, towards me. In the context, I guess. Yeah. You know, if you know that it's because when you when you're in the middle of you know, sex and, and specifically maybe, you know, heavier or rougher sex that sometimes the, what you're saying can, might come out a little harsher than you normally mm-hmm. would say something just because. That's why consent beforehand is yeah, literally, yeah. if we can talk about it and it doesn't just, I mean, sure. Yeah. If we didn't talk about it, you're just like, you're a fat pig out of nowhere. <laughs> and they're like, wait, hold on. Whoa, whoa, quick. whoa. Time out. <laughs> like, that's fine and all, but like, where are you coming from with this? What is yeah. your, what, what? Maintain low tones. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so I'm curious then. Did, so, so you like huge boobs mm-hmm. too. When did you start? Note, like, did you notice that as like I like huge boobs to look at too? Like, as you as you were growing yours, or was it like you actually? Just- you'd be surprised. I actually, when it comes to, I love the look of big boobs. When I am having sex with a woman, mm-hmm. I actually prefer smaller boobs because, oh, okay. and just because. A big boob takes two hands. Yeah, they and do. And then nipple play, like, so, you know what I mean? And sometimes you want it to be tighter so you can play with the nipple more. So if they mm-hmm. already have the tits that sit like that, mm-hmm. I can go like this. Okay. And I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. I have ha- more you- range of motion, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's all. It's not even about what they look like. It's more like n- no heavy lifting. <laughs> okay. But but you can appreciate appreciate super huge boobs on a visual level then. No, I love them anyways. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I have definitely had some good times having sex with girls with huge tits. That's totally fine. Yeah. I'm just saying in that moment, if I had to choose, like, what to do with my hands, I would be having more fun like this with the smaller ones is all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because when when you're with somebody, say, like, Claudia, you need a few extra hands. Oh, hers were so heavy. (laughs) Really? Oh, my God. Yes. They are Uh, so fucking heavy. I was like, and I know people ask me this question all the time. I think I mentioned it, too, is, like get a scale and to weigh, weigh them. them. Yeah. I, what kind of scale would you use? I don't know. But I said that to her. I was like, have you ever weighed him? I sounded like such <laughs> a fucking dude, you know? Yeah. And she goes, well, like, where do you expect me to get it? You know? <laughs> yeah. And right. I was like, that's literally my response to men. Why did I just, <laughs> <you know? laughs> like, I've seen, I mean, I, have, I mean, I know score back in the day when they used to do like, cause they used to do photo shoots that were like you, they would have the model measure yeah. themselves and then they would actually bring like a, Oh, I want to see it was like a, hate to say, it almost looked like a drug dealer scale where okay. they would like weigh, you but know, how dr- big was it? I mean, obviously it was big enough so that the breast could fit on it. Yeah. Cause mine is like, mine's from like, um, mailing stuff and yeah yeah a mailing postage. scale yeah, po- yeah it's like it's not that big yeah it wouldn't fit claudia so that's for that, sure. yeah right yeah <laughs> well somebody should invent a breast like a breast yeah. specific scale hey that's a good idea yeah it should be like the ones that you put fruit in at the store yeah 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 that, like, yeah because those just, are big enough. you put melons and yeah. stuff in there right you know something big enough drop it in yeah that's a good way to know yeah <laughs> so i mean so but uh, like if you were to guess because i know that with with natural boobs um, you know, obviously they tend to be heavier than, than, uh, enhanced ones. I mean, obviously Claudia being probably an exception, but like there are some out there that are huge, but they, you know, they're not as heavy because they're, they're lighter or maybe because they just sit mm-hmm. a little higher, you know? Oh no, mine are heavy as fuck. They hurt my neck all the time. Really? Um, definitely. In fact, hold on. Just uh, all right. A little. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay. So I don't know. I've thought about it and I I know for a fact at least 10 pounds each. Okay. I or know each, right. there's no way, yeah. you know? Yeah. If I'm proven wrong, then well, I'll and, be damned. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, someday I'm sure you'll, f- some way you'll figure out a way to weigh them. I will. To, to get Maybe them. you'll help me. Maybe. Put our heads together. Yeah. Maybe I, we'll come up with that scale. Yes. Possibly. Mm. Yeah. I like, you know, any, <laughs> anything to help out a cause of, of that nature. Right. So, <laughs> You're the guy. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to, like to think so. Um, but so, I mean, so overall though, you have more, cause I know that again, with, with natural breasts, there tends to be more mixed feelings when I've had guests on here where some days you love them, some days you hate them. Oh yeah. So is that pretty much, yeah, that's kind of the, uh, I love them. They're my friends, yeah. you know, but the pain of them, I just wish I had a designated boob holder. I would never have any complaint, <laughs> right? If someone so, would some, just, some 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 viewers out there might might want to. Uh, and I just walk. I walk about my life, and you yeah. hold them placed. Yeah, like that. Have they have they been like your most popular one of your most popular physical features to people that you've dated, people that you've been with? 
I've dated a lot of ass guys. Okay. And I'm like, hello. We're, we're, <laughs> they're beacons. How are they not attracting no, more? No, they like them. I'm just saying, like, I feel like I get more hands and, like, more uh, attention to my ass more than huh. any. I don't know. But my ass did get a lot fatter recently. Oh, well, hey. Since, like, um, I think I, I had a weight gain that was just so hot, you know? Interesting. Like, okay. my belly looks... My belly's like a third boob, you okay. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever yeah, thought yeah. of it that way? Yeah, yeah. Soft and squishy. It and looks just like it. I mean, bop, bop. Yep. Why not, you yeah. know? It's all all great stuff to, to hold on to and, mm-hmm. and play with. But no, I definitely have had um, some big boob connoisseurs that are very happy with my titties. <laughs> um, but I just think uh, if I added up the partners I've had, mm-hmm. more are leaning towards us. Oh, that's interesting. That's fine. I'm, I'm, you know. Yeah, no, no. It's. I it's, used to say um, it didn't get as much attention, so feed it more compliments and it'll grow. And <laughs> that might be where the growth spurt came from. There you go. Keep there, it up. There you go. So, well, Marilyn, um, I, you know, I, I just want to say that, uh, yeah, I loved having you on the show and you were a fantastic guest and I really hope that you come back. I would love to. Oh, there's a second. I, that's cool. Yeah, Yay. no, no. We do. Yeah, we definitely do a follow up. I mean, cool. and, you know, because we're both here mm-hmm. and I'm sure that there's a bunch of other stuff that we could get into. Totally. So, but again, I, I just, you know, wonderful guest. And um, I hope that you had a good time. Oh, I had a great time. This is so fun. I think this is my first official podcast. Like I've done. Really? I think so. Yeah, it was really fun. Thank you wow. for oh, well, breaking the ice with me. Thank you. Well, I'm glad I could. I, I'm glad I could make it such an enjoyable experience for it you. It was great. So anyway, well, and to all of you out there in huge boob land, we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>